Hello there, this is Jordan Goldmeyer with Excel TV. I'm at the Business Analytics Conference um, with PASS in San Jose, California. I'm here with Jer Thorpe, um, founder of the Center for Creative Research. Hopefully I got that right. Uh, Jer just finished his keynote, a great, excellent keynote on data visualization. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, well, uh, I, I I, kind of, I like coming to these events with data professionals because uh, they're, they kind of speak the same language that I do, but in, a, in some ways I think I'm a little bit of an alien. So we, we at the Office for Creative Research, we have this practice that is partly to do with data analysis and producing data analysis tools, but also partly to do with making data visualizations and also making data art. So we do things ranging from charts and graphs to performances in sculpture. So during the keynote, I wanted to bring people through some of the projects that we do. And my intent is to get people to think a little bit more differently about data. Mm -hmm. Um, we tend to think about data as something that is made and used by computers, whereas I think that data is something that is made and used by humans. And by making that change in your thinking, I think we not only can we become better at what we do, but maybe most importantly, uh, we can make a better data world for the rest of us, to, for us and our children and our grandchildren to live in. Now in your talk, you, you talked about uh, Many data visualization practitioners have a very conservative mindset with regard to data visualization. Some of them may be surprised at the data art that you do. So I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about uh, innovative data visualizations and data art and how that sort of uh, maybe differs from the typical data visualizations that we see and why they're important. Sure. I, I don't know if it's whether the type of people that we, we attract in data and data visualization tend to be uh, a little bit conservative. We like rules, and, and in data visualization in particular, there are a lot of rules of what you should and shouldn't do, and what colors you should and shouldn't use, and how many dimensions you are allowed to add to your um, graphic. And I think a lot of those rules were well-intentioned, and I think a fair amount of them probably make sense. But at the same time, um, innovation is driven by um, breaking rules. It's driven by finding approaches that we never would have thought of before. Um, a good example of this that I think about is the stream graph. So um, uh, actually a, an intern at, at the New York Times um, less than 10 years ago, I think probably about six years ago, came up with the stream graph as, as a, uh, a way to visualize um, movie data. And at the time, everyone was all up in arms about how, oh, you can't do that. It's, uh, you, might, you should just use stacked bar charts. And, and uh, this is unreadable. And it's a disaster. And now, like, stream, stream graphs are built into every data visualization tool. And everybody uses them. And, and, and they seem to be part of the rule set now. And I think we forget that this rule set wasn't set in stone by Edward Tufte in 1978. Like it, it, it's moving and changing, and, and in order for it to move and change, we need we need people and companies and organizations to be innovating. And I think we do that maybe to the extreme. So you are pushing the boundaries on what data visualization can do. Can you tell us of some things you see in the future? Like what what sort of future ideas do you see that will take data and sort of lift it off the screen and do a lot more with it? Well, that's that's an interesting question. I, uh, I don't think we can ever see that. And if we, if I could see that, I'd be making a lot more money than I do. In in at the same time, I think we know we know some things that are that are that are that are starting to happen. Um, I know that, for example, maybe five years ago, um, in my work, I was thinking a lot about like how do we bring narrative into data and how do we bring storytelling into data, and that's become a serious question now. People are like, okay, how do I do this in a business context? Um, so we're doing really interesting things, I think, with data in the studio about um, about how do people get feedback from data. So we're, we're essentially interested in, I have data that comes from a group of people. I'm going to do something with it for, for somebody else. <laughs> but how do I make part of that go back to the people where the data comes from? So right now, data is this really one-way thing. It's like we have a vacuum cleaner and we just... We kind of we just suck it up, and 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 uh, I don't think we think very much about how can that be pushed back. And um, we do a lot of work in conservation. We do a lot of work in um, political activism, and in both of those places are places where we really want to push that data back to where it came from. And I think that's going to be a really interesting question. 
uh, for people who are using uh, customer data, um, for healthcare, people who are using patient data. Um, how do we how do we make visualization for those people and not for us? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and how do we empower those people through data visualization? And I think some of that is uh, is me being a Canadian utopian, but I think a lot of that is also I think I think I think has some um, has some business argument because. Uh, we, we can empower our consumers. We can make them trust our, our, our products more. Um, we can, hey, we can make it a better, better place to, again for like, us, us to live in. Now I have one final question. I was actually thinking about asking this to you during the keynote, but I figured I'd use this time. Do you think that there's any data um, or anything that should not be visualized or can't be visualized? Uh, I, I mean, everything can be visualized um, through something like, you know, in statistics and in visualization, we engage in like dimensional reduction. We make things like simpler so that we can see them, and and it doesn't really matter how complicated the data is. We can do we can do it. I think the should is a very interesting question, um, and and uh, I, I I just actually I teach a class called data art at, at NYU, and I just had my student presentations yesterday, and there were two people who gave presentations that used data. Um, one was a, a data on terrorist attacks for the last um, uh, um, 10 years, and the other one was on um, cancer mortality. And the question there is, is, is not, should I do this? But it's like, um, how, how do I consider the people who may be affected by this data in a way that I'm not? And, and, and you know, we maybe have heard this term a lot, and some people might, might, might not, uh, be up in arms about it, but like this idea of the trigger warning, like when I'm showing data that could to somebody be, be uh, problematic, then I should be a little careful about it. And I always ask my students just to think, like th think about the data you're showing. And I, I know in a, in, a, in a business context, you may be wondering like, oh, I'm probably never ever going to do, do that. But I think um, I said this in my keynote, like we make data visualization for humans. And so our question, should be about like how how is the human going to read this? How is the human going to understand it? And I think there are some contexts where we can we can say like yeah maybe maybe this tactic isn't a great way of of visualizing this data because it, it it's problematic for us or for the people the data came from. And anytime that happens, we should there should be alarm bells going on and we should be being considerate. And like the word that I use a lot is like can we be respectful to the data and the systems that it comes from? Well, Jer, we really appreciate this time with us. Uh, excellent keynote. I really enjoyed it. And I want to make sure to tell everyone, check out the keynote tomorrow. This is Jordan Goldmeyer at the PASS Business Analytics Conference in San Jose. Thank you.